Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about full stack, full stack developers and how to be a good one. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, I want to be a full stack developer. How do I become a great full stack developer? That's pretty much it. Then the short answer is number one, you need to master the core tools. You need to have a genuine interest in the entire stack. And finally, I will say that you need to be focused on mastering the core skills within programming and problem solving just in general. Let me explain. So when it comes to full stack development, you do not have the luxury usually to focus on a niche set of work practices such as you as you can in front end and in back end. Now you may think that just because you pick you know a full stack angle to your career that you're just going to get equally good between front end and back end. This is maybe possible but for most people that's just not going to be feasible because we're talking about a situation where it it's, requires you to basically be a master of everything and as you can imagine most people who try to master everything they kind of fail in this regard it's there's no full stack developer or let's just say that there are very few full stack developers that can handle that level of investment because we're talking about mastering something that quite a lot of people do as a full-time thing. Like a front-end developer focuses quite heavily on the UI and the back-end is about back-end and then you have infrastructure and operations and stuff of this nature, which is another a third thing. It's very hard for you to be a master of all of it. But what you can do is that you can master as I was saying, the core skills of programming. And once you master the core, core skills of programming, in other words, if you get really good at understanding how to write efficient, clean software, you're good at architecture, you're good at designing systems, you're good about you're good when it comes to thinking about long-term solutions and figuring out requirements and stakeholder information and things of this nature, it actually becomes much easier for you to to, to apply that skill, those skills into these different fields. You may not know every single tool on the market for say front end or back end, but you don't have to because the reality of the situation is that there's only a handful of these tools that are actually relevant, but the core skills of programming knowing how to really do object-oriented programming well, knowing how to use the best practices, knowing how functional programming work, knowing what the best practices are there, knowing how architecture works, like, or knowing what architecture suits which problem, knowing how to scale a system, knowing how to get things done. These things, they are universal. It doesn't matter if you're a front, a front end person or a back end person, these are completely universal. So. With that said, I think that you should, in the, if you're going to say learn frontend, you, sh you should only focus on the core libraries. You don't have to learn every single tool under the sun. You need to figure out, okay, what are the main tools for most companies that do some type of development work? Now that's usually going to be an SBA framework of some sort. React, Angular, Vue is usually one of those. So you pick one of those and you master that to start off with. You might learn more than that, but you have to start somewhere, right? And apart from that, knowing how to work with CSS and knowing how, like, which one is the biggest one in terms of pre-compiling, usually that's going to be SAS or post CSS. Less is used, but not as much, but usually something like that. Knowing how to work with bundlers and things of this nature, such as Webpack, for example, and of course, knowing HTML and all these core skills. That's part of your sphere. You don't have to sit and try to study every little like weird tool that does something useful like, I don't know, Gatsby or Next.js or Nest.js or whichever framework. Like that, that's not so important in comparison to learning these core skills because those nice to have tools or these higher level tools that kind of automate some stuff for you and do things for you, although those are very useful, 
they are not usually something that you're going to face in every place of work. There are universal things that are applicable everywhere and there are things that are very niched and these tools are usually very niched. CSS is not, not, is not niched. CSS in JS is niched in comparison. One is the standard and one is a very a specific way of doing work, if that makes sense. So you should focus on the core skill and get really good at that, right? On the back end, it's a very similar sort of thing. You need to master a programming language. Which one you pick is up to you. It doesn't really matter all that much. And then you need to learn how to work with a web framework of some sort so you can learn how to do routing, how to do authentication, <clears throat> how to work with a database and session management and all of these different, uh, different things. So in that regard, it, you're kind of the, the scope for what you need to learn in backend development as a full stack developer to be this type of universal, I can kind of do all the things type of character is a little bit smaller than in frontend or rather it's more well not smaller but it's more well defined it's easier for most people to figure out what you need to learn on the back end in order to be considered a solid developer than it is on the front end so apart from that you also go you're also going to need to know learn a few things about DevOps related work. Now usually learning one of the major platforms such as Amazon is probably one of the best choices or Google Cloud or something like Azure. I mean these are the main providers right. Learning how to work with their different systems and setting up storage systems and knowing how to connect in boxes and virtual machines together doing routing and load balancing and all of that good stuff. And of course Docker is a very very useful tool to learn and so is Kubernetes in, depending on of course what setup you have. But if you're not using something like Kubernetes or and like a container based solution usually what you do is that you have some type of virtual machine set up and then quite a lot of companies use something like Chef or similar tools, right? And well, Ansible is probably more popular these days, but Chef used to be the big kid on the block anyway. So the thing that I, the things that I've been telling you about right, right now, as you can imagine, like if you want to be a specialist in all of this and be like top notch in all of it, it's, I mean, it's going to take you a lifetime. It's, uh, you can, can't possibly learn all these tools to be a great full stack developer, but as I said, you don't need to. You just need to master the cores, like the core libraries and the core skills within each sphere. And what's beautiful about this is that even though you may not be a master of everything or be as good as at every single front end library as this person who's only focusing on front end. That doesn't matter all that much because you can still produce and you can still adopt those skills. It's sort of, uh, you can think of it as learning how to swim. And when you re you're really good at just doing breaststrokes or freestyle or something like that, someone asks you to learn a new style of swimming. It's going to be very easy for you to adopt a new style of swimming because you're already solid in just the basic swimming. It's like you're extremely good at running so dashing or like sprinting isn't much of a dis like a, it's not a big change for you to make. So what I want you to take away from this is that if you want to be a great full stack developer number one is for you to basically focus on learning the core libraries for the different areas that you're going to work in which is front end, back end and operations. And these tools are usually on the front end some SBA framework a bundler of some sort having is you know of course CSS and HTML and all that good stuff and then you have the back end where most of the work is you know you pick some type of language that you need to learn and then you need to learn a web framework you need to learn how to use a database do session management and security related things such as that and then in operations you need to learn how to work with one of the big cloud providers and then you need to learn how to work with things such as load balancing and virtual machines and networking and things of this nature access control of course and then docker and kubernetes are extremely useful things probably chef or ansible or similar things you don't have to go down that route but at least docker and kubernetes are going to be very useful for you these are like just rough things guys there are so many more things that i haven't covered in like what i've been saying here i mean i haven't even touched touched on git and like version control and stuff like that 
but these are some of the core libraries and tools that you will be exposed to regardless of where you find yourself on the stack. And as a full stack developer, you will find that it's almost impossible for you to be equally good at all of these things. You're always going to lean towards something. And usually the thing that you lean towards is the thing that you do in your daily job. So if you do mostly front end work, you will be heavy on the front and lighter on the other stuff. Then in order for you to still be able to maintain some type of understanding of all of this, you probably need to invest more time than most other developers that focus on one thing and you're also going to have to focus more on the core skills such as problem solving, learning how to do architecture, learning how to work with different practices really, really well and work on the th your theory and your understanding of how to design good systems because these things are universally useful for both backend and frontend and it's going to make the journey a lot easier. As I said, think of it as learning and being really good at just swimming like there are other people that are specialists in different styles of swimming and you can learn to do the thing that they are they are doing if you learn just the core skills and get really good at those but you may never be as fast as they are when it comes to uh, you know the peak performance level type of um, things it's just it's possible but full stack usually are what this is they call them a jack of all trades, master of none, doesn't have to be that way, but quite a lot of people find it hard to, uh, to master all of these areas. Have a great day.